Fall to row every ish the cardia iskari. And welcome along to another video from Gundog and Fly. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about deer hair. Now, deer hair is a thing that I use to tie a lot of different flies with, but principally two types. Um, the comparadon type flies and sedges or caddis flies. That's what I use deer hair mostly for. Now, as you can see here, I have, this is just some of the deer hair I have. Now the reason I have so many different patches, there's eight here and, and there's some more in here and there's more in another bag just down there. And the trouble with deer hair is this. Virtually any deer hair will do to tie sedge or caddis flies. But to tie comparadons or that type of fly and my uh, sparkle done requires a certain type of deer hair. And it's very difficult to find. I'll demonstrate to you in a while what the actual problem is, but I'll try to explain it before I demonstrate the issue and the problem. And the problem is getting the right type of deer hair to tie comparadon flies. Basically, when you tie in the wing of, um, or you attempt to tie in the wing of a comparadon fly, okay, the wing flares out, that's no problem. It's the piece behind that if the deer hair is not the correct type, will form a lump behind the wing. Now that varies in size depending on the kind of deer hair you get. And it, the ideal situation of course is that when you tie down the wing that you don't have any lump behind the wing because it spoils what I would consider is what's required of a fly and that is you have your wing and then you have a nice slim body leading down to the tail. If you have that hump there, it detracts from that delicate, slim body. You've, basically, you have a lump there. That, From the point of view of aesthetics, when you look at the fly, it just doesn't look right. Now, whether the trout are that discerning or not, I'll leave that to yourselves to, to um, make your own minds up on. But from the point of view of looking at the fly and tying the fly, it's a major issue. So... How do you find the right type of deer hair? Well, this is something I've been pondering for a while and I've done a little research into it. And basically, the type of deer hair that's required to tie comparadons is very, very scarce and very rare. My understanding is that it comes from particular species of deer and only at a particular time of the year and only on a particular part, a very small part of that deer's body. There's one company in America who produce comparadon hair from that specific animal and that specific time of the year and that specific part of the body. And it's at a premium. It's virtually like gold dust. It's very, very difficult to get hold of. And if you actually find it in a shop, the shops are actually restricted to selling you either only one or two pieces of it. Assuming, of course, that you can find it at all. So that gives you an idea of the difficulty of finding the right type of deer hair to tie comparadon type flies. But you can be lucky. Now I was lucky recently. I ran into this piece of deer hair here, which is ideal for the purposes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you by attempting to tie with this good, what I call, I even have a name on the back of it, top notch. This is top notch deer hair that I ran into just by accident because you if you go in a shop for instance and you see various packets of deer hair it's impossible to discern there and then what's good and what's not or if any of it is any good because you can't actually practice in the shop you can't actually tie with that piece of deer hair so what i do is when i see deer hair in shops i buy a bunch of different uh packs like you see here and they're not that expensive but there is expense involved of course so I buy as many packets as possible. Hopefully then I hit on a few pieces that will do the job. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the vice up here and I'm going to show you what I mean by the two, what I consider to be the two different types of deer hair, i.e. that the stuff that works and ties properly and then the stuff that doesn't. Okay. 
So now most of the comparisons and that style of fly that I tied, a sparkle done, etc., are tied on very small hooks, typically. This here is an 18, for example. That would be more or less what I would tie, say, 80% of the comparison type flies I would tie would be tied in size 18. 16 also, but 18 for the most part. Now the tying thread I'm using here, and this is important as well, this is um, Semperfly Nano Silk, right? And it's in 12O and it's brown. Now the reason I've chosen this thread will become apparent shortly and I'll explain more. Uh, so anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tie on, start off as I would normally just tying my typical size 18 compared on fly. Now I'm going to use, I have two pieces here. Now there's my little piece that I've described as top notch, right? Which I came across, like I said, more by accident than anything. And I have another piece here, which you could say would, it, when you go into shop would look very, very similar. So I'm just going to cut out a little piece here of this deer hair. There we are, just like that. And I have my hair stacker here. And I'm just going to tap that just to level the ends of it. Now I'm going to take it out. So I'm going to tie that in now as I would normally do. So I put a couple of turns around, two or three turns, and then I tie down, right? Now this is where the issue arises with this deer hair. When I cut it off here, you'll see what I mean. We have a lump, right? It's created a lump. Now, in order to try and get a nice tapered effect on that body, it's very, very difficult to do. You can trim around I'll do the best I can and show you what I mean, but inevitably that hump there, that piece there, is causing no end of grief. And I cannot get a nice um, tapered body because of that deer hair. It just won't do the trick. See, it's a mess. So that's typically what you'll find when you buy deer hair in a, in, in a shop, that's pretty typical of what you'll find. Deer hair that won't do what you want it to do. Now, I'm going to use what I call the top notch stuff now, right? And you'll see a marked difference. So now you'll probably notice a significant difference with the other deer hair. So I'm going to start off this fly as I would as I did the other one. Now bear in mind that I'm trying to do this without the aid of my magnifier which I use all the time. So I may be a bit rough and ready but hopefully I'll make my point. Anyway this is my what I call my top notch. It's a ideal for this kind of fly, this small compardon type fly. And that's the deer hair there. And um, I'm just gonna grab it like that, clean out any loose stuff into the hair stacker. A few taps on the bench to level the ends. Now, that's what I'm going to make the wing with. Now they're not perfectly level, but it will make no real difference. So I'm going to round a couple of times and then tighten down. That will flare the wing. Now, the reason I'm using this thread, I said I'd explain to you why is it's very very strong and you can apply a lot of pressure to it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make um, every turn will every turn will be going in that direction and it will be getting progressively tighter I'll be applying more pressure to each turn as I go back 
in that direction and you will see hopefully what will happen is when the deer hair is good enough you'll see that it breaks away and trim out that bit there that bit there you have no hump as in the other deer hair right, so I'm just going to go back up to the front here now and sort out my wing by just lifting it vertically with my fingers a couple of turns and pull towards the bend of the hook a couple of more turns this will get the deer hair to stand up vertically and form a nice wing now as I go back along you'll notice there's no hump everything is nice and slim as I like it to be and what I'll do is I'll finish out the fly just to demonstrate how nice and thin and delicate the body is which of course is more representative by the way I'm using a tail I'm tying in a tail of Cock de Leon feathers which were given to me by a Spanish friend of mine um, apparently it's quite expensive to buy I, I've never used this um, well I've never bought it I put it to you that way so here we go let's go back down along tie in my tail so you could of course just leave the body you could just form it from the thread but I'm just going to add in a little bit of little bit of a hair's ear mixed dubbing very slim and trim with these small flies it's very important that they be very slim and delicate looking because if you look at the natural insect that you're trying to represent maybe a little upwinged size 18 fly they are so light and delicate and you don't want any humps or bumps anything that will make them appear um, bigger than their natural size and that's why this kind of deer hair if you can get it or if you can get um, if you're ever in the US and if you inquire in any of the uh, what they call fly shops over there the company I won't name the company but they'll know about it about the particular type of deer hair that's required to tie these small flies and doesn't give you that hump behind the wing which causes the unnatural appearance now you might say would it make any real difference to the fish I'll let you make it like I said you can make your own minds up on that but from the point of view of aesthetics and looking at the fly from my own point of view I like to see the fly nice and slim and trim as in the natural and that's how it looks when it's properly constructed out of proper deer hair so that's it folks that's the trouble with deer hair unfortunately that's how it has to be now any deer hair that you buy of course can be used for other flies it's just there is a particular difficulty in getting top-notch deer hair like this and um, you'll see a lot of packets and they'll be um, for instance this one here it says um, on the label I won't say who uh, sells it but on the label it says Comparadon deer hair but it's not it just won't do the necessary it won't um, it's not the proper type deer hair you'll see it labeled as Comparadon deer hair but it's highly unlikely that any of it will suffice to buy those type flies so um, that's my little rant if you like about deer hair um, if you happen to know of a source of the type of deer hair I'm talking about that where I can get a regular supply please let me know in the comments um, I've met, done a lot of research and as far as I'm aware there isn't any place where it's freely available so that's it folks I hope you enjoyed the video I hope it made sense to you um, if you're not a fly tire it probably made no sense whatsoever so it was a fly tires video so once again thanks again 
for joining me and uh, if you're not already a subscriber consider subscribing also there's a link in the description to this video to my patreon page where any little bit of support would be appreciated so shinna will om sa don trasha harisht bimea chaint rishlif an kedorela slan tamol